Hi, Brian. Thanks for showing up late. Good morning. Almost made it on time. Sorry. Yeah, no, Weather there. conditions. Yeah, yeah, we can share. All right. All right, so I guess we can formally start now. Um, we'll start by introducing ourselves. I'm Brandon. I'm going to be one of the hosts. Um, I'm Ben. I will also be uh, one of the hosts. I'm Zach, and I will be the guardian. And I'm James. I'll describe. All right. So what our topic is, and we'll let Ben describe what our topic actually is here. Um, so we've had the last few weeks to uh, figure out research you know, and find different topics. Um, so our topic is uh, uh, based on the fact that Wisconsin hunters no longer have to wear bag tags while hunting deer, black bear, black bear elk. Also, um, it's part of the Go Wild initiative that you no longer need to carry a paper license when you're out hunting or fishing. Um, while the two rule changes came at roughly the same time, they are in fact two different entities. The bag tag that has been attached to the as a license plate on Wisconsin, Wisconsin hunters for years is actually a law, not a DNR regulation. There's a typo. Yeah, um, it was first created back in uh, 1942, and it was something the DNR uh, could not change um, because it was a law, not a DNR regulation. But finally, in 2015, the process began with a group of state representatives pushing to eliminate the need for hunters to wear the bag tag. And on, uh, in February of 2016, Governor Walker signed and amended uh, the Senate Bill 289, um, which officially eliminated the requirement to wear a DNR-issued bag tag while hunting deer, bear, or elk. The Go Wild initiative is majorly is a major effort by Wisconsin DNR to encourage people to get outdoors and enjoy all the recreational opportunities. The Go Wild license, licensing system will make it easier than ever to get your hunting, fishing, conservation, patron license, and more. The new system secures your license and registration information electronically. As part of the system, the DNR will offer an optional conservation card. I know Brandon has, and I'll mention that. Um, that provides proof of purchase of your license and hunter's safety certificates. Um, there are other uh, methods of proof, such as your driver's license, like a plain paper copy, um, or displayed on a mobile device. So, uh, you know, it sums things up. You'll be able to buy specific type of licenses like you did before, online or at a service center. Um, but you will not receive or re be required to carry any type of paper license on you, like the neon green, yellow, you know, paper that, that we all know that we used to have to carry. Um, but you know, not, like I said, you still have to carry um, some sort of proof that you know to prove to a warden that you are um, um, able to harvest any animals or be doing what you're doing. Um, so by now some of the hunters may be wondering um, how you will tag game species like you have in the past, such as like, you know, you shoot a goose or something, O'Brien, you know, shoot a goose, you know, slip the thing, or, you know, your, your deer, you know, the month and day and whatever time, whatever going on like that. Um, so um, that's now all online. Yeah, about it. So I'm going to introduce to you guys the uh, circle way process. Um, so we're literally in a circle. We want to be talking to the center of the circle, not uh, talking to a single person. We don't want to single anybody out. We want to focus on the group as a whole. Um, everybody's going to get a chance to talk. We would like to refrain from interruptions if at all possible. Um, we also want everybody to be focused on the group and what's at hand. Uh, we don't really want any multitasking, people sitting on their cell phones, playing games or whatever. Um, and we want everybody to bring their ideas and uh, opinions to the group in a well thought out, intelligent manner. So, Ben will tell you about the host role. Uh, right. um, well, I, I mean, as a host, um, we're here 
you know, as Brandon and I, um, kind of uh, organizing um, topics and uh, what and when it'll be discussed. Um, kind of lead you guys yeah. through the whole, whole uh, process and discussion. Yeah, we'll be figuring out when to switch from one topic to another. Yeah, and my job as a guardian is, as Brandon said, we want to focus our discussion towards the center of the circle, not at each other. If we start arguing, then, you know, we don't get things done. And as far as the things get out of hand, I'm, I have the ability to step in and break things up if need be. So. And I'm just scribe is kind of what it means. I'm going to be writing down if there's something important or super wise words that someone says, I'll have that written down. I'm going to go through at one point, I'm going to go through the pros and cons, I'll just kind of keep track of stuff for later, we can refer back to it. Um, and our professor does require us to record it, so I have the GoPro and then I have the mic here. So if you speak loudly, that would be very appreciated, but otherwise it'll be just <coughs> basics. So. And uh, this recording, it's going to be solely for academic purposes and will not be shared. Oh, except for our professor. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty sure she's the one that sees it. Yes. Yes. So, like Ben said, the history of it, uh, the rule was changed in 2015. And uh, now, in 2016, only Delaware, New York, and New Jersey require you to have back tapes for hunting. Um, I know, like Wyoming and Colorado, it's not necessary. In many other states out west, it's not necessary to have back tags. It never has been. So it's a little bit about the history of it. Um, we were one of the last states to abolish back tags and registering deer. So we're the last one in the Midwest. You know, you know. And it was uh, Illinois was two years before. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. yeah. Very long. Yeah. <coughs> So um, I think we could probably you know, go around and other uh, topics. Uh, is there any questions so far? Maybe introduce themselves. Yeah, yeah you want to you go around right now and you know, introduce yourselves. Start. My name's Matt. I don't hunt. So. <laughs> my name's Dustin. I'm from Reedsburg. Um, I've hunted my whole life and fished and stuff. So. Okay. I'm Brian. I hunt occasionally. I guess. I'm Will, and I just started hunting this last year. I'm Colin, I've been hunting since forever. All right. Sure. Um, and then I didn't uh, really mention in like the actual topic, but but for for discussion purposes, um, this this rule um, could have effect on like many different things, you know, such as like like it said how it's it's like the, the license plate, you know, for hunters, like you know, we'll be in a car. So we figured it, we figured that because of this, um, it could lead to issues such as poaching, you know, or trespassing. You know, now that you don't have to take your deer in to register it, you know, it's it's really easy to say, you know, screw it, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, you know, it's whatever, who cares, you know, it's gonna see it anyway. Yeah. Um, so, so. And another big thing with that is like it was always a tradition to go down to the local bar and. You know, talk, see everybody's big bucks opening morning, and mm -hmm. that's taken a lot of revenue away from those buyers. You had to go down there to register your deer, you might as well stop and have a burger and a soda and stuff. So I know that's one of the big things around us that was hurting. Right, along that, with that, the gas stations as well, too, that yeah. always registered. Yeah. Those are always. Do you guys know why they wanted, like, why everyone's taking it away? It seemed like it worked. And yes. Like it's the system that worked, why did everyone not? Um, it was, uh, I could find, you know, some actual numbers, um, <coughs> but costs, costs for the states, um, it costs, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, in, literally in materials, to print, yeah. plastic, you know, say, you know, for your patient's license, you're going to get, you know, eight, eight feet of green paper, you know, and say, you know, a few million people do that. You know, that's a lot of stuff like that, and, uh, you know, now with the, you know, technology and everything, um, just the sense of just being easy. They want to make it easier for people to register instead of yeah, taking yeah. it to the bar, you know, doing it over the phone or on the, on the internet. 
And like I mentioned, this, it was all part of like the Go Wild initiative, which was the Go Wild. It's you know some it's created by the DNR. You know, it's all it's an initiative trying to get you know younger people out and walk out outdoors and you know doing things and you know like say like Willie, you know, I, mean, I don't know, you had to you know give credit to you getting getting out hunting, but you know stuff like that. You know, it's your first year, so. Right. And there was a lot of conflict too with the active hunters were saying as far as like having to wear your back tag, you know, brushing up on trees and scaring deer away. That was that was also a big push for a lot of yeah. active yeah. hunters. Just like that, you know, like why do I need to go throw a pin through my three hundred dollar Gore Tex jacket in the bag and then so you know you you take that off and now you gotta still have it on the outside, so you gotta switch it from coat to coat and mm -hmm. So it's just uh, just for the sake of being easy and uh, and cost by the state from the state and stuff. Another big thing, like I I don't know about you guys, but I lost mine about three times mm -hmm. one year. Yeah. Yeah. Just going through the thickest of stuff you can imagine, and right, right. you mm -hmm. always had to go print a new one off, otherwise you'd be illegal. Yep. So. <clears throat> Um, if you guys want to tell us like what your thoughts on the rule changes are, and maybe we can get a better understanding of you know, where you guys are coming from. So take turns, whoever wants to go first can go first. And Might as well just go around the circle here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, um, man. I don't really care about it because I don't hunt, so it doesn't really affect me at all really that much, I guess. Are you a landowner? Yeah. So, have you ever been worried about like somebody trespassing on your land and poaching deer? Or um, no, but if that happened, I'd prefer the old way so I could identify them. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess the question I had was, they changed from like the laminated bag tags, and you would put that tag on your deer. Now it's paper, correct? You have to put a paper tag on the deer. Do not need to put it. You if don't. It, if it don't, if it gets out of your possession. So if you right. would shoot your deer and hang it in your shed and go in your house, you'd have to have a tag in it because it wasn't on your immediate possession. Okay. So like, if you left the deer in the woods to go get your truck or something, you don't need that. No tag or anything you don't need on, it? A tag on it. Okay. And was it, it needed to be tagged at 5 p.m. the next day after you recover? Yes. The car, yes. Yep. Okay. When, you know, usually it was... You had to right. take it the yeah. night of or right. whenever you found it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so also makes it a little easier for your poaching. Yeah, because yeah. there's no tag on the deer at all. No, yeah, it's right. just a deer. Yeah, there's no exactly. identification right. on the deer. Like, you wouldn't, I guess my opinion on it is, like, you only get one buck tag a year. So like if you shot a buck, if a guy shot a buck and you know he doesn't have to tag it, he doesn't have that physical tag on the deer. Mm -hmm. He's already well last like last year you would have put that tag on the deer. Now he doesn't have a second buck tag. Right. You can't put a second buck tag on that deer, and you know it's illegal last year because right. there's no tag on that deer now. Now there's <coughs> no tag at all involved. He can shoot like three bucks and never tag one of them. You wouldn't know. Right. And he like I guess my you'd run out of tags. Now you can you don't have to worry about that tag at all. Right. right. With a poach in a, from a poaching standpoint, I guess. Right. But along with that too, um, as far as the paper copies, copying them. Mm -hmm. Guys that can make too, copies. That could happen too. Yeah. Easy enough, you know. So. Um, I've been uh, uh, doing research, and I found uh, right as they were trying to pass this bill and stuff. You know, there's there's people that that would you know have an opinion and mm -hmm. and write into the government or the the state legislator, um, and this guy is uh, Thomas um, Torzen from Fishburg. Um, he wrote a letter, a letter in um, um, opposing this, and uh, kind of as as you were saying about trespassing, um, right here he says. Uh, um, this is a direct quote. While most uh, hunters are very responsible, the back tag requirement helps reduce trespass. From my experience as a conservation warden, people who were hunting deer during bow or gun season who did not have a back tag were either trespassing or didn't have a license. I specifically recall two situations where I had licensed bow hunters who were hunting late and trespassing who were not wearing a back tag. One had a back tag in their pocket and the other had left it in their vehicle. They admitted that the reason they didn't 
have their back tags on was that they knew that they were going to be trespassing and did not want to get caught. So that kind of like goes along with, you know, like that's, that's like your license plate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So like some say like they were on your land, you yeah. know, you could get your binoculars out from your house, you know, say they back, had their back tags on, mm -hmm. right you got the number, write it down, call it in, mm -hmm. and be simple as, you know, simple as that. You know, now you're going to do about it. Nothing really. Sure, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember the story about uh, up north about that Hmong guy mm -hmm. that went yeah. and slaughtered eight people. The reason they caught him was one of the guys that was like, 12 people, sorry, 12 people. Mm -hmm. that's right. you know, the guy that did survive, he saw his back tag and jotted yeah. that down, and that's yeah. how they caught him. Mm -hmm. So They actually found him sitting in his stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. In, on uh, someone else's land. Mm -hmm. But I agree with what you said about like not having it. That raises a red flag right away. Like someone doesn't have their back tag on, like bam, right away you know something's wrong or you know they're trespass or poacher or something is wrong right away. And now everyone, you know, is all the same kind of. You can't really differ between which is which. But. And uh, kind of, again, just to go along with that, my uh, family friends, you know, have a farm down the road from us. Not hunters, you know, they're older. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've given permission to, you know, other friends to come and hunt on their land. Mm -hmm. So, and they'll say, you know, it's, it's open Saturday morning in deer season, they see someone strutting across the field, look up your neck, and oh, that back tag must be a hunter, must have given permission. Mm -hmm. Now, we have no yeah. idea who that is, and mm -hmm. what are they doing out there, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yep. again, it's just identification. Mm -hmm. So, no, like, you you hunt on public land here and there, right? I know, Will, you, this year you started hunting on public land. Is there any concerns? You guys are hunting, people without bag tags, you know? I mean... I didn't see anybody out when I was on public besides some kid that I knew. But, I mean, there wasn't really any sort of concern with that. Mm -hmm. um, the only questions that I have with that is, can you still register a deer at a gas station? Or is it strictly, no? okay, so what about the guys in the sticks, the old guys that don't have computers? How do they register their deer? That's the thing, yeah. Or, you know, if they want to put, because when I, I got stopped out duck hunting on opening morning, and they, the one paperwork, he didn't, I don't know, couldn't scan it or whatever, so he took my license and swiped that. And that's what showed up for all my conservation licenses. And uh, the only other concern with that is what about the kids that are too young yet that don't have licenses or cars for license plates or any sort of real way besides... Uh, you saying who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a concern. Um, and that's, you know, that's just another thing that could be a problem with getting rid of this stuff. Okay, so why don't we continue around with your opinion on it and then yours, and then we'll go back to uh, that uh, email you got from the warden and just kind of see what his opinion is so we can look at it from the different side. So, uh, so this being my first year hunting, I never really had to use a back tag, um, but I feel like it would have been a lot nicer to know that all the people around me, that they were where I was hunting, there was quite a few people there. It would have been nice to know if, hey, that guy's supposed to be here. He's registered. He probably has training with a gun, and he's not going to shoot. <coughs> right. So for the safety, yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. Guy with no license, right? You know, you don't know what you he's going to do. Yeah. You don't know how well he's been trained to use right. his rifle. Mm -hmm. I've always kind of been brought up from the standpoint of like um, management, like herd management, I guess. And the DNR is obviously concerned about that. They limit the number of tags per unit for a reason. Like they know how many deer are out there, they know how many they want to be taken. And to me, this seems like a backwards step. Like there's no way that this could be more accurate than physically tagging a deer and bringing it in. There. People forget, people who won't even bother, they'll just take it, cut it up right away and not even bother taking it in. They won't call it in, they won't do anything about it. So it seems like a backward step to me as far as 
getting the numbers right and knowing what's going on actually in the DNR. Right. Especially with like society today, you can't really have it where, oh no, I'll trust them to go on the website and register that deer. I mean, when I shot my buck, we didn't get stopped. You know, nobody questioned it. I could have gone inside and said I shot a doe. It would have been that easy, but you know, you gotta kind of figure out if you really want to trust the population. Yeah. To be honest with that. Yeah. And, and just like you were saying, like last year, you know, during this season, last you know, this best season, the antler season, you know, I, you know, I saw three doe. You know, what I thought were doe running 100 yards, and shot the biggest one, and died. Granted, died probably 10 yards from my stand. Looks like a doe. You know. And then, and so I literally get my phone out, register it right there. Climb down, turns out it's another bug. You know? Mm -hmm. So like, great, you know, it doesn't help anything towards the, yeah. you know, pretty number. The numbers, right? Yeah. The numbers, right? Mm -hmm. or, you know, you know, maybe I should have actually gotten out and looked at it first, but, you know, I figured, whatever. I mean, it's, you know, it's dull. Yeah. Yep. But, I don't know if you guys saw like, the stats from this year, but there's like 7,000 some less deer shot. Something well, around supposedly, there. Supposedly, yeah. yeah. Know about. That mm -hmm. they know about, exactly. How are you keeping accurate records with yeah. that? And, you know, I shot my, my buck this year. I figured, you know, to bring it to the butcher, you know, I figured, you know, like, they would require to show like confirmation of registration. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had it all like email saved and screenshot and everything to show it to him to prove that. I shot this legally. Mm -hmm. He didn't even ask for it, you know. Like, so anyone could, so, you know, like you say, you know, copy yeah. tags and mm -hmm. you know, shoot on your money. Yeah. Just keep getting it butchered and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So. Same with the uh, guy that I brought mine to get European mounted. Just he was like, "Did you take off the tag?" And I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "Okay, good. Now I don't have to." Like, it's one of those things where I don't think everybody's on the same page with sure, how everything goes. Uh, that and I've had problems with the Go Wild website too. Sure. I uh, I signed up for my patrons, and I never, you know, I got a confirmation email, and then I would get online to print off some licenses, and they would say I don't have like a turkey license. That's I mean that's part of it, and so I would have to call, and they'd be like, oh yeah, it says here that you do or it says that you don't. I had to call probably four or five times just to make sure that I had all my licenses. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot more problems with that not being sure of what you actually have. Yeah, no, exactly. You were saying when they first started to switch it over, you know, yeah. to the, how it took you weeks just to get your... Just to get a license. Stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah, that was mm -hmm. definitely not yeah. something ideal, especially trying to go, you know, opening fishing weekend, you're trying to get your license and it took like two weeks or so, so. Yeah. Well, it was nice too when you could go to a gas station and oh, I forgot it on my way up. Right. Have them printed off. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know, I could be a positive thing now, and like, oh, you forgot your actual paper copy. Let me just, you know, yeah, you know, I don't have to worry about having your mm -hmm. solid copy on you. Know? Right. But for some things, you do though, right? For some game or exterior or goose. Something. Exterior goose. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you need to slit your numbers. But so yes. for like that's that's another confusing thing. Like for certain things you need it. Like maybe fishing, I think I don't think you need it. But like you're saying, goose, maybe need to carry a paper copy. Some things you need your driver's license. Sometimes you need that go wild card thing that they charge you like five bucks for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just the whole thing's confusing to me, yeah. and especially a lot of other people. It's confusing to me, and I've been growing up with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, like you know, us as hunters, and you know, Willie and you know, me, you don't. Know, know anything really different, yeah. you know, so therefore, you know, like, what do you really care about it, you know, mm -hmm. but I think mean, it's tough just making that change. And for, for me, just trying to get my hunting license this year, I tried to go through on the website and fill out all my information, and it wouldn't accept my, um, like, any of my in information, it wouldn't accept my military ID number, my driver's license number, my, um, wouldn't accept my uh, hunter safety, wouldn't accept any of that. So finally, I just, I just ended up having to go to Walmart and have them try and figure it out for me. Mm -hmm. And it worked a lot easier having someone else who knew what they were doing yep. actually go through and 
print everything out. So. That is one nice thing though, not having to go to Walmart to deal with the knuckleheads in the back. <laughs> that is very true. Yeah, yeah. I, I still went to Farm and Fleet and got it done. I mean, it's so much easier to just say, you know, I want my turkey license, I want federal and state stamps for ducks, I want this many doe tags, I'm hunting in this unit, and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Well, it, since it was still pretty new, like, I also went to Farm and Fleet. I told them I want this and this and this, got it. You know, then I'm, you know, about to go hunting, and then, like, looking through my tags, like, I don't have my goose, you know, my goose permit. I could swear, like, I had it, I told her I needed it. You know, I literally saw her, like, I thought she rung it off and everything, but, you know, sure enough, I didn't have it. So, it, you know, it took her 15 minutes to go through, because she didn't know what she was doing. Like, oh, I, you know, they're changing everything over, it's so, mm -hmm. so complicated, like, why can't it just be the whole way? Mm -hmm. yeah. But. And I know we're talking a lot about deer hunting here, but is there any like other perspectives as far as like turkey hunting or you said you did some duck hunting, goose hunting? Oh, it hunting. sucked for duck hunting. I mean, all your stuff gets wet. You, yeah, got, you got paper copies that yeah. I sure. printed off once and I had just a ball of wet right. paper. Yeah. I mean, I figured they'd just look at my license if needed, but sure. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the only real I mean, waterfall. Boat, fishing you know. as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys ever went bear hunting here. I don't know how it worked, um, but I went bear hunting in Minnesota, and they didn't have back tags or anything up there, so when I shot my bear, all we had to do was take it to the gas station, register it, and that was it. Hmm. I mean, it was simple as that, instead of calling over the phone or anything like that, but I didn't have... Nobody knew if I was hunting bears or if I was just sitting in the blind trying to shoot squirrels. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, why don't we move on to those yeah. emails? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know, when we started, we got our topic figured out and started trying to do some research and, and figure and find different opinions and just different information about it. Um, I immediately, you know, figured I'd try to contact DNR. So. I just went on and I'm actually, I was actually sent a few emails back and forth to uh, Todd Schaller, who is the chief warden of all of Wisconsin DNR, you know, you know uh, based in Madison, you know, so, and also um, uh, Matt O'Brien, who is the law enforcement policy officer for the Wisconsin DNR. So I'll uh, talk a little bit about um, what I was talking with for with Matt O'Brien, you know, as a, from a law enforcement perspective. So, what I'll quote from here is, um, um, this is a some uh, letter that he wrote in, um, just for because to pass the law you need like like I don't know witnesses or you know evidence from people. I don't really know how it works, but so this is something he wrote so. Um, under current law, and this is a 2015, so under current law, back tags must be displayed by individuals hunting this, this, and this. Um, from the law enforcement perspective, a back tag number is occasionally a component of potential law violations, either reported to law enforcement by citizens or observed by law enforcement officers in the field. The potential violations may be related to hunting laws enforced by the state DNR wardens trespass violations enforced by the local law enforcement officers such as sheriff deputies or other criminal acts. <coughs> Excuse me. For investigations where a back take number is included, law enforcement officers may be able to identify the suspect and close out the investigation in a more efficient and consistent manner as compared to investigations where the identity of the sub suspect is not established from a back tag. However, the de department does not track the number of natural resource cases where a back tag number is essential evidence. So the quantitative impact to the DNR cases through the removal of the back tag requirement is unknown. Um, and then he uh, you know, continues to go through it and uh, um, like in more um, the legality aspect of it. Um, but that's just another side of it, you know. You know, we're all here as hunters, but you know, Matt O'Brien, who I've been emailing, is law enforcement, you know. Now when I'm really here, law enforcement, like, well, I guess I'll ask you this question, you know, you know, could could a back tag, like, could you think of a time where a back tag would be helpful or 
to a police officer. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Especially if uh, if there's a case where like one hunter accidentally shoots another hunter, and there's someone that was standing behind them that saw that hunter take the shot, writes down that back tag number. That officer can just go to that person. Hey, did, did you happen to catch their back tag? Yes, it's this. This is a okay. This is who shot him. This is what happened. Boom. Case closed. Sure. It'd be a lot easier than trying to track down a witness of a person who shot somebody and a lot of times like just someone describing what someone looked like especially if everyone's wearing a yeah. orange yeah. yeah well you can also yeah. use them for like if you were an officer and you saw somebody walking with the back tag you could you know probably run their back tag through the system and if they have any sort of warrants or anything like that that's going to show up in their name yeah. you know because their back tag is going to show who they are and they can run that through the system, and that'll show if they have warrants or not. And it could be used in multiple ways versus mm -hmm. somebody being able to lie about who they are. You know. Yeah, look good. Um, so this is an email from Adam Bryan as well. Um, you know, he was just trying to give me you know, information on top of their project. Um, but from a, he says that you know, having to do with like the gun deer season um, in several, several different areas of the state, the only comments that I had received from hunters regarding back tags were of a positive nature, you know. I mean, it's easy, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, we're up here, I don't say bashing it, you know, but, you know, from what Matt O'Brien, who's in the field and actually talking to other hunters, you know, I, you know, generally, uh, positive nature, you know, like, people think that it's a good thing that's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, this was from um, the Assembly Committee on Natural Resources <coughs> and Sporting Heritage, you know. This is, uh, they wrote in saying, it is time to update current law by, by removing the unnecessary, burdensome requirement of issuing and displaying a back tag, you know, so. And then I found, also found that a few guys on, online that were just ranting about it. You know, like this guy, yes, the back tag is, de is dead. Those silly, indestructible, you know, three by nine inch irritations have been prominent but oddly popular, popular part of our deer hunting heritage since the legislature mandated their use in the 1942 season. You know, and then people go on and just praise it, you know, mm -hmm. the facts, you know, the facts that we, we mentioned, like scaring deer off and costs of the state. And, and stuff like that. So with that though, we kind of want to get like some pros of the Senate passing the bill. Yeah. So, some that you think some good things that came out of it. If anybody wants to share about that? And if nothing, great. It's totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in Minnesota and most of the people up there, uh, you know, we didn't have back tags at all. You know, so, so when I was hunting, you know, I was much younger, we didn't, we didn't, I didn't, you know, I moved here and all of a sudden, oh, this is an interesting, weird little thing I had to carry. And I just thought it was an annoyance. I never even thought much of it, you know, besides the fact that, you know, I have to strap this on. And I just, I felt more like a, a number in doing so than an actual, like, I'm a hunter. Um, but it wasn't that big of a deal. But in Minnesota, the concept of back tags was never really there. Um, so it was never any issue not having it. Um, so it was just kind of an extra, so when I came here, I just thought it was like an extra thing that they, they had, and it was just like this, um, more of an annoyance in the fact that it's, it's not really, as an individual hunter, it never was something that um, mattered either way, now it's just this extra thing that I have to keep remembering, as opposed to keeping the little thing in my pocket of, you know, my, my, my tags. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the back tag specifically really was more of just a tiny little annoyance, as opposed to like a big thing that people would rage about or rage about. But I, though I, I could see from like a, a legal standpoint from an officer or um, someone else you know, having an actual issue. Um, but up north, the culture was more of if you were not a safe hunter, no one would let you on your land. And if you were stupid or you know, proved to be like that, the DNR knew it. You know, it was a small enough community that you knew who you were and you knew who, where people were around. Um, and if you were a guest, you were on someone else's land with them. And that was just a very common cultural practice. So the need for the back tags was never there. Um, most of the guys didn't hunt for sport. Most of them would hunt because that's how they fed their family. Um, you know, so that, that was it was a different mindset when approaching that. 
Um, so having the back tags here for the you know few years I, I did hunt with them it was I saw more of a culture of you know for sports so it was more for um, you know not as much as I'm actually a safe hunter you know so there was a level of you know are these people being safe or not you know so having back tags would be a different concept in there so the culturally it was kind of a um, it wasn't important or even needed up there. So. Sure. Yeah. And I know like talking with my boss about the, uh, he, he deals a lot with like the Mennonites and the Amish and um, before you had to go register your deer and stuff, um, they wouldn't go register the deer. The DNR wardens would just come in and write them a ticket. They'd go to court, say, you know, this is how I feed my family. Court would just let them go. No, there's no need for them to do that either. either. And there's no way to catch them or anything like that. Not that there was implications set on them, right. but you know that's just something that the DNR doesn't have to go out and check now. Well, how's an Amish guy gonna register a deer? Yeah, I'm not on the phone exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's, it's not changing. It's not changing their way of life. Yeah. at all. I guess the question I had was, you said that the deer numbers were down, that the number of deer that's registered what, were down? That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, was the num? do you know the number of hunters? It was down. That was down as well? I think so. Okay. I don't know if you guys heard anything, but I'm pretty sure the number <coughs> of hunters were down. Hmm. Okay. It's always been kind of declining though, right? It, it has been. Very yeah. steadily, I don't think this, was, this year was a huge jump. No. Okay. Mine was still down, right. I know that. I, I don't know if, you know, the number of deer getting shot was down because of the weather. You know, we didn't That's have great good. deer hunting weather, but still deer get shot every year no matter mm -hmm. what. Yeah. I don't know if, no real way to prove it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even one year. Yeah. You can't just. You can't make a solution. One year. Right. You know, maybe if there's a steady decline, maybe there, that's a reason for that go wild initiative. Right. right. Let's call it initiative. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to get people. You know, outdoors and right. doing things, whether it's you know, deer hunting, like we've <coughs> been talking about, or fishing, or mm. mushroom hunting, or anything like that. And back to what James said, with everyone kind of knew everyone in your area, and I, I think that's what probably Wisconsin DNR wants to get to, eventually. And granted, this is the first year it's ever happened, so who knows? They could go back to the normal way and mm. you know start a new thing again with back, that, with back takes. Yeah. Yep. You, you never know, it just... You do never know, but... Sure. Yeah, that's why, like you said, they call it initiative. They're yeah. trying something. If it doesn't work, who says they can't go back? Right. Just because everyone else in the country is like, that doesn't yeah. mean they can't go back. You know, there are still a few states that do it. Right, mm -hmm. there's a exactly. Mm -hmm. It was never really broke from the get-go, I don't think. Sure. I don't think the system was ever broke, but... No, no. Cost, it was the only, I guess, cost, and cost. if you lost your back tag was the only cons to the old way. Mm -hmm. right. Yep, but I don't know. I guess it's, for our generation, kind of, it's kind of, I don't know, convenient, I guess, for us, because we all have phones, we all have that, we can all do it, we're all tech-savvy like that, so, I mean, and I guess if you're hunting out in the sticks, you don't have to come all the way back into town to register your deer at a gas station to go back, so I guess that could be a pro to the new system. But that was always a tradition. That was always something that everyone liked to do was go, you know, show off what you got. And, you know. That's exactly right. Exactly. I think that was one of the big things why they did this. It was, like you guys have been <coughs> saying, it's an initiative trying to get the youth out there, the kids mm -hmm. that, you know, are tech savvy, make it easier on them, everything. Mm -hmm. So just go on their phone and do it instead of, like you said, if they're too young to drive or anything, have their parents pick them up or grand whatever, you mm -hmm. know. So, is there any cons we can kind of think of? I know we mentioned a lot, but if you want to just restate any cons you thought you had or anything like that. Well, we've pretty much all been talking yeah. about yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Um, okay. Like, as you said with that, maybe we move on to the possible improvements sure. of the system. I mean, like we were saying, you know, it's, it's been one year. It's kind of hard to make assumptions yet. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. everyone has their own opinion, but... You know, mm -hmm. you know, it's been working for states. Right. You know, they've been doing it for exactly. you know, a long, long, you know, not much in Wisconsin, <laughs> but I don't know how long, mm -hmm. you know, say Kansas is going to be whatever. Right. You know, right. Um, sure. Well, like I know turkey hunting here has always been, you never needed a t back take for turkey hunting. No. No. But, and 
I guess that's one thing that changed from deer hunting going. You still had to take them into. Still register. had to register, yes. Yeah, you but, had yeah. to tag them. Mm -hmm. Sure. So. Uh, that's one thing I kind of like to see is like, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a back tag, but you still have to take them into register. Yeah. I think like, that could bring up a lot more accurate numbers. Mm -hmm. Especially because you know my my dad and my grandpa, I can speak for them. They're far from tech savvy. Yeah. And then they got big fingers <laughs> trying to punch numbers in on a little mm -hmm. cell phone and yeah. gets hard on it and stuff. And mm -hmm. Especially in the cold. Yeah, you can't feel your fingers or anything. Yeah, and right. yeah. I know my dad, when he... Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. So, I mean, you know, I'm throwing conclusion out here. Is there any other like, questions about anything else or... Any improvements to the laws that you guys could see fit? I'd like to see some sort of a physical something on the animal that you take. Yeah. So you know whose it is and you know when it's <coughs> taken. It's just too big of a question to have three deer laying in the back of a truck and it could be anybody's. Sure. I and mean, you could do that back in the day too. You know, I could shoot a deer, I could shoot three doe and my brother would take one. You know, it's still possible, but it's just easier now. Mm -hmm. to get away with, yeah. I don't know, poaching almost. Well, like, I know we had a problem with it. Um, one of our neighbors shot a big buck, and they told the DNR if we find it, if, like, our family found that uh, registered, or he told the butcher shop that if our family registered a, a big buck to call him, because he thought that we knew where the buck was, but just wanted to take it for ourselves. So we got... Uh, the law called on us because we did shoot a different buck and I uh, registered it and um, he called the game warden on us saying that we stole his deer and registered it ourselves. Make a better shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that was a problem. <laughs> yeah. We thought we'd find the kind of in the corner, but... I don't know, I like looking back on it too, like after a season of goose hunting or like if I had a back tag or anything for this year, you know, looking back to see how I did, I like to count. I mean, I guess I could write in a notebook, but. No, no, no. You got diaries. Yeah, <laughs> in my hunting diaries. <laughs> <laughs> like door journal. No, no, it's cool. Like in one of the drawers of my, in my desk at home, you know, it's like full of just green tags. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. all my own yeah. hunting license and fishing license. And I gotta have some green in my wallet. Yeah, you're right. It's weird, you know? Now my wallet's half the size. No, my wallet's empty. <laughs> sure. Well, boys, thank you all for cooperating. Thanks for coming. Yeah, for coming. appreciate it. Big help. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, all the well thought out comments and everything. Good job. Don't worry.